Okay, so welcome to Lafayette Strong. Uh, my name is Jewel Bruche, and we here at Lafayette Strong, and we are going to work on the aspects of the squat. And uh, most people will jump to a back squat right away and have some problems. And so today we're gonna address on how to build the squat properly. So this is part one of building the squat. So today we're gonna focus on the air squat, okay? The air squat is very simple, but there's a few basic cues that can help a beginner and even advanced lifters. As time goes on, maybe their mobility has gotten bad and they're starting to maybe have some issues with their squat and they don't know where it's coming from. A lot of advanced lifters will suffer from poor weight lifting as far as their maxes or their poundages in general going down. And it's not because they're getting weaker, it's because their mobility might be losing um, its range of motion and they're having problems just performing the squat in general. As a beginner, it would be the same thing. They may have mobility issues or don't understand how to set themselves up properly. And so they're always bending in the lower back or tucking in their butt really hard, <clears throat> knees really dipping forward over the toes. So we're gonna address all these basic issues and help you build your squat effectively as we move on through the next couple stages. Today I have Candace working with me, one of the trainers, and we're going to address right away first from the bottom up, let's start with the feet, okay? So preferably you would like your feet pointed straight ahead, all right? That would be an ideal situation. So as you can see, her toes are pointed straight and my stick is straight. If my stick is slightly out, just slightly, and her toes are slightly turned out, that's perfectly fine. We have different people with different types of hip sockets and that may be an issue, but we don't want a wide out toe. That's what we don't want, okay? Now, you may see this in powerlifting and things like that, but we're not talking about powerlifting. We're not talking about creating the shortest range of motion for the highest poundages. Today, we're talking about properly squatting safely, so that way we can effectively train our body in a functional and safe way. So, we want our toes pointed forward. How far apart should your feet be? Okay, so realistically, how tall are you? Five four. Okay, so if you are above five feet, most people will do well with a bumper plate, a standard 45 pound plate size between their feet, all right? That puts your feet slightly above, I mean outside of your shoulder width, but more you, all right? If you find that a little wide for you, even for someone like 5'4", they may find that kind of wide. It's not a big deal. Or what you need to do is just find two 10-pound plates sometimes will be just a hair bit shorter and allow you to come in just one inch. All right, you can all use, always use like a, an Air Max pad if you have that available in your gym. But as long as your feet are slightly shoulder width, you're good, okay? So the next thing we're gonna focus on is we, want, we don't want to make sure her knees go past her toes. Now, I know there's a lot of talk about, oh, my knees going past the toes is really bad, and that it's not really bad, it's just for squatting purposes. It's just not comparable to really push them out further, okay? And it, it just later on will induce poor technique because what happens is you'll keep existing, pushing your knees out further and further, and then you're actually gonna lose the squat itself together. It's not that big of a deal, I feel, in lunges and things like that because that is a single leg exercise and we can really specifically work on the stretch of the hip flexors, the psoas, hamstrings, blah, 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 okay? So one thing we're gonna do is make sure that her knee doesn't go past her toes as I'm gonna cue Candace to make sure that she actually sits back, okay? And what I mean by that is I don't want Candace to roll up on her toes. I don't want her heels to come up off the ground. And one of the best ways to do that is by just legging her, shift her weight backwards. That's the same thing that you hear actually in deadlifting. So it's a little confusing sometimes, but I'm not trying to 
shift my weight all the way behind me. I just don't want my weight to roll forward onto my toes, so I do this, all right? And look, and then I start to round my upper back, all right? I wanna shift my weight back so all the weight is driving down into my heels. So, Candace, go ahead and start to squat just slowly and, and go about halfway down. Perfect, all right? Okay, we're gonna come up. So as you can see, she performed it fairly well, no problem. She did not roll up onto her toes at all. If you are to roll up onto your toes, I have two quick suggestions for you. One, the reason why is this is because either you are squatting wrong and by pushing your knees forward too much, or it's because you have poor ankle mobility, okay? And so you would have to perform ankle mobility exercises before your squats. Simply as stretching your ankles out and rolling your ankles out before the squat can actually take care of that. A lot of times they're just stiff, but if you warm them up and get them nice and loose, they'll start moving for you, okay? If you have really poor mobility, you're obviously gonna have to keep working on it and keep working on the air squat, all right? Your second option is to take a five pound plate, sometimes a 10 pound plate, and actually place it underneath the heel, okay? This is good in a couple of different ways, such as that, is because it will put a lot more direct emphasis on the quad. So if you're an advanced lifter, this is a good movement for you because if you're advanced, you shouldn't have any squatting problems. But as a beginner, I'm not the biggest fan of this because we're inducing putting strength on top of dysfunction. That's a quote from Greg Cook. And so what I'm doing is I'm reinforcing the body to stay incorrect, all right? Instead of addressing the issue, I'm just kind of skipping over it. This is something I've seen done before and I've actually done with myself about five years ago when I had a back problem and I started putting it underneath my heels and all it did was just make the problem so much worse because I never addressed it, okay? So, this is a simple fix for now if you're doing bodyweight squats, but before and afterwards, you should really focus on ankle mobility exercises and make sure you keep that heel flat. All right, now, I'm having trouble shifting my weight back. My ankles are good. I'm still rolling forward onto my toes. So what should I do? Well, the good thing about the plate is as you squeeze the plate, Mario ring again. As you squeeze the plate, it's the same thing if you have a band and you press out, your ass has to contract, all right? If your butt contracts, then it's gonna automatically shoot your hips back in its normal motor pattern like it should. This will allow you to squat better. So go ahead and try that. She's gonna squeeze slightly, and that allows her to drop her weight down into her heels. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so let's take a look at that from the side so you can see it from the side. All right, so her weight is going to stay on her heels. Her knees are gonna come maybe up to her toes, but her butt is gonna shift back and drop straight down. Awesome, very good, okay? See this straight line, oh, whoop. that's okay, go ahead, right go See this straight line, go ahead and tip your head forward, down, more, there. That is optimal, that is perfect. Okay, go ahead and come up. This is really good, that's what we are looking for, okay? A lot of people have been coached to arch their lower back, look up high, and stick their chest out. Go ahead and do that and squat like with your butt washed as hard as you can, your back washed. Yes, that is, that's wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. That's gonna hurt your lower back big time, okay? And it's gonna cause a problem with your upper back in the long run. Okay, so we address the lower body. We address the hip issues. If you do have hip issues, one of the best things you can do is a Samson stretch, which is basically just stepping forward and picking your arms up. That's another video, but we're gonna to continue to work our way up through the body, all right? Another problem that people have is thoracic stuck. They're stuck in their thoracic mobility, and so one of the best ways to start all this is she's going to place her hands low, thumbs up like that, point straight out, okay, and squat like that. That is your ideal perfected movement. That's what we want to look for, okay? Come up. 
as things progress and we feel like, okay, we've, we've mastered that squat technique, she's going to pick her arms up a little higher, about 45, about right there. That's good. Now squat like that. Good, still very good, okay? This is ideal, perfect, you can come up. This is ideal because we wanna make sure that her upper back can handle the loads, okay? Now, the next progression would be an overhead squat, which I'll let her work with. You would start slightly, or you can even go really, really wide because you're gonna work your way in eventually. So go ahead and squat like that. Awesome, great job. There's a little bit of a curvature right here. It's deep, but this is an overhead squat. So it's just having a couple of issues. If I would do it, you would probably vomit, all right? So what we would wanna do is we would start with an easy, easy position and then we would slowly work our way all the way up to like even over, overhead. Not many people can do that, I understand, but that is your ideal thoracic movement and posture, okay? <clears throat> Okay, so that is basically your air squat, okay? There's other variations and other things, and like I said, we'll, we'll progress through those on another day, but I don't wanna make the video too long because I know you're not gonna watch it. I know I wouldn't watch it for that long, okay? So we wanna make sure that our toes are pointing forward. We wanna make sure our knees aren't going past our toes. We wanna make sure our weight is shifted back onto our heels. We wanna make sure that our hips sit back so that way our weight does distribute properly onto our heels, all right? And we wanna make sure that our back is, our back is straight and I'm not overextended like this. I'm down like this, okay? Because what's gonna happen is, go ahead and get in the side squat again and go down. You, you can use your hands or not. You can put your hands however you want. Go ahead and squat. What I want is, you see this? See where her shoulder's at? That's where the bar is gonna be. See how it goes right down by her ankle? That's the weight. That's what I need. Okay, go ahead and come up. That is the proper alignment. That's what we're looking for. So, once we move through part two into part three, we can actually get into a back squat. It's gonna make sense because you're gonna see the weight distributed all the way down through her hips into her ankles, so that way it's evenly placed. It's not putting excessive lumbar pressure or excessive upper back pressure, which we'll talk about hand placement and other things like that, okay? So, thank you for watching. I hope this helps out. Go ahead, share this, pass this on, subscribe, whatever you wanna do. If you have any questions, go ahead, comment below, private message me, whatever. If you are interested in working with us one-on-one, -on -one, you can meet us at Lafayette Strong. We are located in Lafayette, Louisiana. Uh, anything else? That's it. All right, see us. that's it, come see us.